Okay, so let's let's do a quick recap of what we discussed last week, and then we continue with the implementation this uh, a this week. So I hope my screen is uh, is visible, and as you can see, I'm back uh, in office. Is my screen visible? Yes. The yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you recall from last week, uh, we were discussing about MQTT, the message queuing telemetry transport, which is a very popular a messaging protocol for IoT, okay, for sensor, for sensor systems. Uh, developed in 1999. A quick, quick overview of what we discussed last week, it, why it is appropriate for a IoT, because it is lightweight. Uh, it uh, even works uh, in intermittent networks, where networks you have frequent disconnection, which makes it very good for IoT, IoT systems. There are three main components, publishers, subscribers, and brokers. We discussed lengthily, and it uses the publish subscribe approach, the publish subscribe architecture, very important. And uh, normally you have publishers publishing topics and you have subscribers reading those topics, getting access to those, to those topics and everything, all communication happened through something we call the, the broker. Let me check who wants to get access. Yeah, everything happened through a, a through the broker, what we call an MQTT a broker. You can see here publisher prescribing data to the broker. The broker sent the data to the to the subscriber. Those subscribers that have registered in those for those data topic or for those data. In the data we call it topic in MQTT. Okay, so these are a few uh, configuration details. Uh, we have already said that it is published subscribe. Big advantage of published subscribe, it decouples uh, message senders and receivers. They don't need to connect to each other. Everything happens through, uh, through, through the broker. Then it's a number of standard packets that are exchanged between the publisher and the broker and between the subscriber and the broker. So you see the list of, of uh, messages or control packets that are exchanged, published, Publish acknowledgement, publish uh, receive, publish release, publish complete, subscribe, subscribe acknowledgement, unsubscribe, unsubscribe acknowledgement. So all these are MQTT control packets. These are the logical uh, communication, a sequence diagram for the for connecting to a broker, uh, publisher connecting to a broker, then subscriber connecting to the broker then publisher publishing some data to the broker and then the broker send the data to the to the subscriber a, yeah a, a number of characteristics we discussed last week uh, in mqdt you have three levels of qos uh, at most once at least once exactly once i have explained the differences uh, last last week these are the a free QoS level, and that's zero, one, and two. Then there's the idea of retain messages, okay, where the loss uh, value for this message is stored and, uh, and it is given to any new subscribers. This is the whole idea behind retain messages. You have, uh, you have the loss wheel, okay? You have the loss wheel uh, where a, if, if ever there is a, a, a disconnection that happened, uh, this is there's a response that you send to everyone saying that this uh, uh, subscriber or this publisher is no more available. So this is called a loss wheel. This is an example of a, of a loss wheel. We have already seen this is an example of a, a, a publisher publishing a topic, a packet. This is subscribing, and we have said in when you subscribe, this how do you subscribe to a particular topic? You use uh, uh, a hierarchical uh, a path, okay, and you can use wildcards. The plus symbol stands for anything, or at the end, the hash symbol means everything. These are examples subscribing to a topic. This is uh, 
a client that subscribes, subscribing to a particular topic, client that uh, publish, a publishing a particular value for a particular topic. You will see this with uh, implementation today. We'll try to implement this today. <clears throat> this is a hypothetical example where a cell phone connecting to a broker, sending a message to some switch, whether to switch it on or off. Yeah, very important. Uh, there are some um, brokers, available brokers. Two very popular ones are Mosquito and have a Hive a MQ. We are going to have an example with Hive MQ today. Otherwise, you have Mosquito as, uh, as well. I think after you to go through, through this, uh, normally you, have a, you need to develop your MQTT clients and you have API already for, uh, for this. For example, Eclipse Paho project is an example of an API for MQTT client. That is, for you to write your publisher and your subscriber, you can use this uh, platform, Eclipse Paho a project. And this is what we're going to use today. Uh, after you to go to go through Hive MQ, go, go to Mosquito and have a look at the different capabilities. Go to Eclipse Paho. So I hope you have done this uh, uh, this exercise because today we are going to. Uh, I will show to you implementation of uh, of this where you have a client connecting to a broker and then broker sending information to the to the subscriber. Yeah, this is it for from last uh, from last week. Let me proceed for with uh, MQTT implementation now. An example, the same thing that we have discussed last week, but with implementation this time. And recall, you need to have your broker, your publisher, your subscriber. So basically, this is what we are going uh, to, 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 to see. So describe the publish subscribe model. Yeah, part one, what we want. We want to have an implementing an Android application. So this will be a client, an Android application. Okay, that user the Paho Android service. Okay, so Android applications normally you develop it using your Android Studio. So basically, uh, you want to develop a mobile a, a mobile app. Okay, that is connecting to some device or whatever. Okay, for you to uh, to control something, to control a switch or uh, to control some LED on an uh, on an Arduino board or whatever. So on one side you have a mobile apps and Android and Android apps. Okay, so how I, the, the question is how on your Android Studio when you are developing your app, how you can make it connect to a, a, a broker, a broker service like uh, Hive MQ. So basically, this is what we are going to learn here, because otherwise, uh, if you are not able to connect your mobile apps to your broker, you won't be able to do anything. So. Yeah, so basically. Uh, you will need to create uh, your client, MQTT client in Android. So here we are talking about uh, both your publisher and your subscriber. Okay, and I know that the mobile app that you develop at the same time it can be a publisher and it can be a subscriber. And this is what we are going to do in this example. You are going to see. But the most important part is how to to make your mobile app connect to connect to a cloud-based broker. Okay. Uh, uh, let me address a question to the class. Give me two examples of a cloud-based broker. Examples of cloud-based broker to the class. Anyone? Um, Say it again. No speaker. Yeah, Kalichan. Mosquito is one. Yes, this is a cloud-based, a cloud-based broker. Mosquito and uh, another one. Hi. Yeah, Hive MQ. So basically, these are two very popular cloud-based broker. We have I have just mentioned it in my recap from from last uh, a, a last week. So basically, this is what I was uh, referring to. So what you need to do, you need to create your your clients, your mobile apps that can act as a publisher and as a, a subscriber, but then you need to connect to the cloud-based broker like Mosquito or, uh, a, or Hive, okay? So your M MQTT client to publish messages, obviously you need to have a client that publish the messages and you have to, you need to have an MQTT client to subscribe to the broker, to receive, to receive messages. So you will see in this example, how we develop a mobile apps that publish a message to the broker and receive message from it, from a broker. 
Okay, so basically to develop your your MQTT clients. Okay, uh, obviously if you, if it is a mobile apps, you are doing and uh, you are developing an Android uh, mobile mobile application. So you will be using your Android Studio. You create your project and everything. So how to make use of Eclipse Power? Because we have said that uh, the Eclipse Power already provide API for the clients. That is subscriber and publisher. Because in Android, in Android Studio, you don't have publisher subscriber, but uh, you want to use the API that is already available. Okay, that is Eclipse Power, and and you need to integrate it in your Android a uh, project in your Android uh, a Studio for you to be able to use those those clients. So this is what we are going to uh, to see here. So it includes a Java client, the Eclipse Power, a Java client for embedded application and Android. So you see here and Android applications. So this is what we are going to use here. These clients that is available in Eclipse Power, how do I use it in my mobile application developed in Android uh, Studio, for example? Okay, and then uh, the API normally is callback based. I don't know whether you have been exposed to this concept of, of callback, but callback is just a mechanism to pass codes, that is a, a bunch of codes, uh, functions, as a parameter to another function, okay? And we will execute it as and when, and as and when required. Uh, yeah, basically, as I have told you, for your implementation, you will need Eclipse Power, which support TLS. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security, where you have encryption, authentication, and everything. It supports QS012, so you know already what others QS012 that we discussed from, from last, uh, last week. You see Eclipse Power below. I hope you have gone through the website. You have seen what is Eclipse Power. Someone want to join? Let me check. Okay. So basically, we will need the Eclipse Power in our mobile a, a mobile mobile apps. So there is something called Pahoo Android uh, a service. Okay, this is what I'm going to use in my in my Android application that I am that I am developing. So I hope you understand the context. The context is that uh, I want to develop a I want to develop a mobile application. Okay, that that needs to connect to a broker, and in my case here, I want to connect to the Hive uh, MQ broker. Okay, and uh, my mobile application, I want it to act both as a publisher and as a subscriber. And uh, those publisher and subscriber, I already have those functions in the Paho Android service. Now, how to call those functions in my normal mobile apps? Tell me, uh, uh, because uh, you, uh, I need this knowledge. Uh, have you already developed something, a mobile application on Android? Uh, in, in any of your module? Yes. Okay, so I, I, I guess you have a module, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Molu. Yeah, exactly, with Dr. Molu mobile application, and the second part is wireless. Uh, wireless. Uh, the wireless part, actually, I was teaching it, but now I'm not doing a, a lot of teaching, so he has taken, taken it. But anyway, I know that the first part is on uh, uh, mobile application, and, and exactly it is on Android. Uh, you, you develop uh, mobile applications and everything. So you should not have any, any issue with this, with the, with the mobile a part. What I'm saying here is that I want to implement those a publisher and subscriber uh, in, my mobile, in my mobile app, okay? So this is what I'm showing you. I'm showing that the mobile app, you know, uh, all the steps for developing it. Anyway, you will see the code as well. So what we have here, you have something called the Paho Android service that I need to use in my Android application, mobile mobile application, interface to the Paho Java MQTT client. The Java MQTT client is already available. You just need to know how to call it in your mobile mobile application. So MQTT connection is maintained by Android service. So once you, uh, your mobile apps, when it is connecting to the broker, there is something called the Android uh, service, which is maintaining this connection.
between your mobile application and uh, a cloud-based uh, broker. So you don't have to worry uh, to worry about, about this. So more or less, everything has already been taken care of. You just need to understand the code. Once you understand the example that I will uh, go through, you can develop any types of, uh, of application. Okay, so this is what we're going to see, implementing an Android application that uses the Paho Android uh, service. So basically, the first step would be uh, create your Android application in Android Studio, which you already know how, how to do it. You know, you know it very well. So you, you develop an application, you give it a name and to it up, for example, you see, select your phone type, your table, you select an empty activity, you click finish. So this is basically creating your, your a mobile application in Android uh, Studio, your Android application. Next, what, what is new? What uh, new do you need to, be, to do here? For you to be able to get access to this Paho Android service, for you to be able to get access to those codes that create your publisher, your subscriber and everything, you will need to include those, uh, uh, the Paho Android service. How to do this? There is uh, a file, a build file called Cradle. So you need to add this code there. Okay, repository, you see HTTP repo eclipse.org content, repository Paho releases. So all Paho releases, this Paho Android service will be imported in your, uh, in your Android application. This is what we are doing here in your Android project when you create an, an Android uh, a, a project. You see here, uh, this is the path and uh, and this is how the first step what you need to do to be able to use the Paho Android service. You need to include this piece of code there. It is standard piece of code. After making the changes to the Cradle file, click on Sync Now. So this will be there in your, uh, in your ID. Okay, Cradle files have changed since last project sync. A project sync may be necessary for the ID to work properly. So this is on your Android Studio. You sync now, so it will sync and, and add this Power Android service to your uh, Android project. So this is the first step. Second, connecting to the service. Okay, once the service has already been included in your project, you need to connect to the uh, to the service. That is the Power Android uh, a service. So binding the Power Android service. This is how do we do this? Uh, the service needs to be added to the manifest.xml file in your Android uh, project. Okay, so first. Uh, add the following within the application tag. This piece of code here you added. This is just uh, uh, to connect to the particular service. You see here, Eclipse Power Android dot service dot MQTT service. You see here, MQTT service. That is, I want to have all access to the MQTT service that allow me to create uh, publishers and subscribers. And you add the following permissions to your manifest.xml a, a file. Next, uh, this I think you can already, you can create. Okay, this is a, a title. This is a, how do you call it? A text box here, another a, a title and then a text box here. This is a button, another title, a text box here. This is a button, okay? And then the, here is a text, uh, text area. So basically uh, you can already do, do something like this, but I will, uh, my purpose here to show to you uh, and you understand this interface. Have a look at this interface. What is happening here? There's a topic message. I will put a topic, put a message, then we will click on publish. This is doing what? Anyone from the close? No. This part here, what do you think it will do normally? This part here. I see topic, I see message. And normally this is, there's a text area here. You need to type something here. We need to type something here and then I click publish. What it will do, do you think? Let me check from the close. I don't hear anyone. I will choose uh, a Kaviraj Gosai. Yes. What do you think this part I'm, I'm asking? What do you think this part here? There is topic, we need to type something. There is a message, we need to type something and then we will click on publish. What do you think it will do this action when you click on publish? This uh, it, it will publish a topic to the broker. 
Yeah, exactly. This I wanted you to say the broker. It will connect to the broker and then send a topic there. The message, mm -hmm. which topic it is, and for this topic, which value. The message is the is the value. Right. You're 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 right. Uh, now the second part there is topic subscription. There is uh, uh, a sub. There is a area. I see. Uh, I need to type something here in this text area, and then we click on subscribe. Let's have another one from uh, a from from the clause. Why, why, is, why we have the list of participants? I don't want to choose only those who are at the top. Here it is. I wanted to have this. Let me go down. Let's try uh, Baman Sibot. Yeah, Sibot. Now you are on. Baman Sibot. I see a number of messages for my previous uh, question. Yeah, Vaman has uh, responded. The broker will send the message to the subscriber. No, actually, no. I, I knew that uh, many of you would have said this answer that Vaman is, uh, is saying. He's saying the broker will send the message to the subscriber. No, not at this stage. Not at this stage. I will show to you the interface again. Then I will have, let's say, uh, we will have Yashvin, Yashvir Jadu, okay, to answer me. I will show them it's the uh, interface again. You see here, there is topic subscription. I need to type something here and uh, then I click on subscribe. Yes, uh, I, who said uh, Jadu, yeah? Yashvir Jadu, what do you think? Uh, a, a particular topic will be given to the user. Say, say it again. A particular topic will be given to the user. A particular topic will be given to the user. No, no, I don't think so. Let's have another one. Uh, you're not getting the wording right. Uh, Vikesh uh, Pidana. Oh, yes, uh, the user can act as a subscriber and subscribe to a particular topic. Yeah, this is the right answer. This is the right answer. Yeah. So wh what others have said, like, uh, here, I, I need to type something, then I click on subscribe. What I'm doing through this mobile app, I'm not receiving the, uh, I think uh, Berman said that uh, we are receiving, we will be receiving a value from the broker. So not, uh, a, not this one. We are not receiving any value here. Recall, recall, for us to receive a value as a subscriber, first I need to subscribe to that particular topic. If I have not subscribed to the topic, how I will receive message for that topic? Recall from, uh, from our publish, subscribe from our sequence diagram that I've showed you everything. So in the first part here, uh, I specify a topic, then I give a value, I click on publish, this value goes to the broker, okay? So I, I, I've seen in the chat system, some of you said the value will be saved in the database or whatever. Don't think, uh, don't view the broker as a database, view it as a queue. Views as a queue, the messages that comes and it queue it queue there. Okay, yeah. Now, now here there's a text area here. I click, uh, I uh, type something. What is this something? A yeah, topic subscription. Okay, I want to subscribe to a particular topic. I need to specify to which topic I want to subscribe. So I I type this here. I want to subscribe to I don't know which topic lights. Okay, so we type lights here. We click subscribe. Okay, then what will happen? This application, this MQT app here, is a subscriber of this topic lights. This is what will happen to the broker, with the broker. Okay, so uh, I don't know who have answered the uh, loss was uh, Jadu, if I'm not mistaken. So Jadu has correctly uh, explained, if I'm not mistaken. So we connect uh, to the, uh, we are subscribing for a particular topic at the broker. This is what we are doing in this uh, in this part here. So you see these mobile apps, well, why I have done this exercise with you here, this mobile apps is acting both as a publisher to a broker and as a subscriber to a broker, okay? Now there's a third part of this mobile apps. I see something here, down here, it is just a text area. It will display something. Let me have another one. 
another student explaining to me what do you think the low spot the low spot will will display i think i've uh, asked only questions to boys let me get a girl divya jumok yeah divya what do you think the low spot i'm asking this below here the low spot what is this about what it what it is used uh, a four. Yeah, Divya Jumok. Now you are on. Okay, uh, she's answering through chat. It will receive the message that has been okay. Good. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you're right. So yes, this part here. When I say subscribe to a particular top topic uh i'm already subscribed to that particular topic now if there is a message it published that is coming the broker actually the publisher is not doing it the broker will send the message and i will have to display it here that is lights on or off or whatever message is coming it will be displayed down a uh, down here so you are you're right yes so you see there are three parts in these mobile apps. Here we, we publish some data. Here we subscribe to a particular topic. Here we receive the data to which we have subscribed. We will not receive all data. We will receive only those data to which we have, we have subscribed. So you will see all this in terms of codes now. So now that you understand the app very well. Okay, let's uh, continue. Okay, this is just, uh, let me check. Okay, our text message, our label, buttons, the publish button, the subscribe button. These are a few uh, string to save values. Let's check. Then text message will get a particular text and then displayed here, text topics, subscribe or whatever being entered here. We will capture it and save, uh, save it, okay, in those uh, variables. These are the buttons, button subscribe, button publish. Okay, well, this is what this, this uh, there's nothing new for you here, these two slides, but here there's something new. Here there's something new. Creating the MQTT Android client. This is very important. Okay, uh, I'm instantiating, as you can see here, generate an ID, generate ID, then create a client is equal to new MQTT cl Android client, this dot get application context, this path here from this broker, okay, and this, this ID, okay. So this is just creating a client, okay, for my, uh, for my Android application here, an MQ MQTT client. You will see next, uh, here was, here's the, the same code that we had before, a uh, new MQTT client and everything. Then uh, you have uh, a try and catch. In the try, just check. Uh, it is very easy, just that if this connection is successful, if it is successful, then it will display connected. If it is not, we are not able to connect, uh, that is a client, because a client, when you create in your uh, application, it needs to be connected to the broker, and you want to check whether uh, the client has been able to connect to the broker or it has not been able to connect to the broker. If you have a client, it is not connecting to the broker, it is useless. You won't be able to subscribe, you won't be able to, uh, to, to publish. So this is why this piece of code here, uh, if it is the connection is successful, a client.connect, okay, then it will display connected. If it has not been able to connect for, for any reason, then it will say connection, connection failed. This is what it is uh, doing this part. Okay, now that you have an application, uh, that is uh, what, what we have said here. It is already including the Paho Android service. Uh, you have created the interface. You have also instantiated your client. This is very, your MQTT client. This is already done. Run the application in the emulator. At this point, you can verify. Yeah, here we are not subscribing because on the interface, they subscribe and and uh, publish, but I have not yet written uh, the code for a uh, subscribing and publishing. Now we are going to see it in a few seconds, but at this point in time, when you run your application, you can only check whether the client is connecting or is not connecting to the, to the broker. Which broker? TCP slash slash broker dot hive mq dot com in this particular port. You see this broker. 
whether we are able to get connection to this uh, to this broker. This is the only thing we can check at this point in time here. Run the application in the emulator. At this point, you can verify connection to the broker has been active or, or not. And now we need to see how we are going to implement our publish and subscribe. Here it is. Creating the publish and subscribe methods after uh, the on create method. Okay, you have the on create method. We are going to see how to place it. But see the publish method here. Okay, the publish method, P public void publish. This is the publish method, okay, that I'm implementing. And uh, the publish function, okay, it says here client. What is client? Client, you recall, we created it before. It is an MQ MQTT client already provided by the Paho Android service. So I'm not writing the full code for it. I'm just using it. This is why earlier I said there are API that will help you to do practically everything. You don't have to do much there. You instantiate the client, then you say dot publish. That's all. That's all. Finish. You're not even implementing the whole code for connecting and publishing because that the API is already providing it to you. Okay. So what we have here, you see client dot publish. You need to specify your topic. You need to specify which message. You need to specify the QoS a, a level. Okay. You, in this case, it is zero. Okay. QS level zero and retain whether it is true or false. You recall those uh, a parameters that we discussed last week, QS level n, and whether it is retained or not retained, true or true or false. This is client.publish. Okay, you have, it, you have it. This is a message uh, to say that has been published, message, uh, message uh, a publish. And then for subscribe, your subscribe method, client.subscribe. To which topic, because any subscribe method, you need to state which topic you are subscribing. This this is a parameter. Eh? There will be a value in, in it. Recall, we had those at the start. Let me check. Here it is. Topic, message, topic, subscribe. It was already uh, uh, declared at the start of the of the program. These are parameters that I am I'm referring to here. Here there is, uh, for the publish, I need to say which topic topic I'm publishing, which message, what is the value, okay? What is the QoS level, what is the retain uh, uh, flag, whether it is true or, or false. For subscribe, which topic I'm subscribing, the only thing I need, which topic I'm subscribing, and the QoS, uh, QoS level, zero, one, two, okay? This is to, to subscribe. And obviously you need to link those methods to the buttons. I think I do it somewhere in the code you were going to see. Yeah, this is just a callback. Recall, I was talking about callback uh, anyway. Uh, within the onCreate method, I've told you, you can pass, you can pass existing codes to a function. Okay, so here in this case, a uh, client dot set callback new MQTT uh, a callback. Okay, so this is uh, let's check string text equal to new string. Okay, a uh, label output dot set text. Yeah, here. When I'm getting, you notice here in the parameter for this method, message arrive. Here it is. I was looking for this message arrive. Uh, there's a string topic, okay, and then there is an MQTT message message. Okay, this value will come. When the value will come, message here, message dot to string. I save it in this in this uh, text here in this text. For this topic, this message, I save it here and then I display it. Actually, it is this. Uh, message that we are referring to on the it is you recall uh when i was a third question uh one of your friends say divya said that this will be displayed here the value to which we subscribe will be displayed will be displayed here it is to this value that we are referring to here in this case where it is here you get the message and display it on your on your label this is what this is what we're doing. We need to subscribe. We need to publish. This is how I will use the publish method. We need to subscribe. We need to use the subscribe method. We need to get the value that has arrived from the broker and display it. And this is uh, how we are doing it. And this is what is the callback. And it will be executed when required. When, when required means when a message comes. Add, add, add listeners to the button. Obviously, you need to link your, you see here? button subscribe, your button subscribe, you call your method subscribe here, your button publish, you call your uh, method publish here. That's uh, straightforward. You already have the method up here, uh, publish here, subscribe here. You just call it when 
the subscribe button will be pressed, the method will be called. When the publish uh, button will be pressed, this method will be will be called. You will be publishing to a particular. Uh, and recall, we had already, for example, let's check our interface. On the interface, to publish, we need to have a topic and a message. And here, topic, the variable topic and message. This was already linked to topic and message was linked to text message, text topic. Okay, topics and, and message, we will, whatever will be written, whatever will be written in the text area will be saved in this topic and message and will be passed to the publish function uh, here. Okay, and the same thing for subscribe. For subscribe, I just need topic subscribe. Where is topic subscribe? Here it is, topic subscribe is here. Whatever I will type here will go in this parameter topic subscribe and it will go in my subscribe function it is client the subscribe topic subscribe will come here and uh, it will go to the to the broker to subscribe for a particular topic so we have already reached here our buttons now uh, publish we can publish or well, subscribe we can we can subscribe okay so we'll, we will run the application we will publish a message lights on to the topic let's say there is a topic csc 30 and a 99 sensor let's say there is such a, a, a such a topic okay and i'm sending this particular this particular message we will also subscribe to the same to the same topic for us to be able to view it on our apps so first of all we need to publish it go to the broker then the broker return it to us and i will display it in the in the app because the app is acting both i recall the app is acting both as a subscriber and a publisher at the same at the same time and uh, to do this you go uh, using the hive mq to test our application if you want to uh, to see the message has come at the broker uh, obviously the connection should be successful all these things should be should be verified uh, let me show to you i think i have already shared my entire screen it should be i was on this website this morning i don't know what the, here it is Okay, so uh, is my browser, you're able to view my browser? This is a Hive MQ? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is a Hive MQ uh, broker. And you see here, the port, the host, uh, this is the client ID. Recall there was a client ID generated and everything. Okay. So, so for, to, for subscription, let me, you click on this this here add topic subscription when you click on it you can add a new a new topic here okay for 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 subscription this is for publishing where it is for publishing and this is to view the message that has been that has come on down here the message will appear here normally if a client has sent a message for that id there is a client id here for that id the message will be displayed Will be displayed this is if you want to check it on the hive mq dashboard eh? normally if you have implemented a system you won't go to the hive mq dashboard this is just for testing purposes for you to see that you are you are connecting and the message is coming to the to the broker only for this reason we are showing you this uh, dashboard let me go to the slide you will see example so this is the the the, the dashboard And uh, so basically, we want to we run the application that we have just written. We publish a message. Which message? Lights on. Where I will put this lights on to a particular topic. Where I will put this lights on? I will put the lights on here, and I will put this CSC thirty ninety nine sensor here. The topic is CSC thirteen. 3099 sensor and the message is lights on this is the message and then i will click on publish this is what will happen where it is here we publish a message lights on to the topic we also subscribe to the same topic so here it is on the hive mq dashboard click connect the way it is here it is connect you click connect and uh, add a new subscription topic here you click on subscription down here. You click on add subscription topic. You add you add CSE thirty ninety nine sensor 
a slash hash. Okay, you add this to the uh, to, 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 to the broker, then publishing a message via the app that we have developed and viewing the Hive MQ dashboard. So I want to see whether the message is coming to the broker. So what I do on my add the topic name and the message and select publish here on the mobile apps I've just shown to you before. It's a CSC 3099 sensor lights on. I type this here, click publish, and then I check. I check on my Hive MQ dashboard. It says here on the Hive MQ dashboard, click connect, add the, this is what we have done. Then publishing, so add the topic name and the message and select publish. The message can be viewed on the Hive MQ dashboard and the Android app as well. If you have subscribed to it, if you have not yet subscribed, it won't be displayed there. Otherwise on the dashboard, it will appear here. Okay, down here. You click on message, this arrow here, you will see the message appearing down down here. Let me see if I have a screenshot here. Yeah. I have a screenshot here. You see here, the topic was added. Add the new topic, which QS level two, and this is the topic. And the message has come, yes, because a, so a publisher, the publisher, my, my mobile apps, my mobile app has submitted a topic CSC 3099 sensor. And I have this topic here. And then the value was like, a lights on, and this is displayed here, meaning that you are, you are able to publish correctly. Just to check that we are able to publish uh, correctly. This is publishing. Let me check if we have, whether yeah, it is a CSC 3099 sensor and message is lights on. You click on publish. Now to subscribe, you need to subscribe as well. To subscribe, you just type CSC 3099 sensor subscribe and then you are already subscribed to this topic when a message is published you see here message received lights on this should be displayed on your on your mobile app so if you are uh, able to do this exercise <coughs> uh, you are able to connect uh, you have developed a publisher it is connecting to the uh, broker it is sending message to the broker uh, you have been able to develop uh, a subscriber you have subscribed to a particular topic and you are receiving a message from the from the broker. So all these have been done in this in this application. So you see the complete application here with the, all the codes, all the steps, you should be able to do this. You have even videos on YouTube for this example that I've just shown, uh, shown to you. If I'm not mistaken, I'll put the link at the end of this of this lecture. Otherwise you can search it on Google, on uh, YouTube, you will should have, have it. So I want you to do this, uh, this exercise. This is one. Now what we want to do, let's see part two. Implementing an Android application that uses the Paro service. Okay, adding additional functionalities. There's nothing much here in the part two. We are just adding, uh, if you are able to do this only, it should be okay. But a few additional things to the same project. Let's check. Okay, if you want to unsubscribe, recall here we can only publish and subscribe. But then uh, recall uh, from last week, we can, I should be able also to unsubscribe. I was subscribed to a particular topic. Now I don't want to subscribe to that topic. I no more want to subscribe to this topic. So I need to be able to unsubscribe. This is an unsubscribe method, public void unsubscribe to a particular topic. You need to get the topic that you want to unsubscribe and, and uh, with client.unsubscribe this topic. Here the main part here. Here it is, client.unsubscribe to, to the particular topic that you want to, to unsubscribe. So, and then you just display message subscription remove. Also, oh, error in removing subscription, you have not been able to, to unsubscribe. Creating the disconnect uh, a method, disconnecting from the broker and closing the network. So you can also disconnect your client. You were connecting to a, a, to a broker, but now you don't want to, to remain connected. So you can disconnect, there is a disconnect, recall disconnect uh, a method okay, that you can, that you can use. Or, and then uh, to connect again, you just say client.connect, you will be able to initiate the connection, the connection again. Where it is, so public void disconnect, here it is, this is the main part, client.disconnect. This is the main part, successfully disconnected or error in, in disconnection. So these are additional facilities. Huh? Adding additional buttons and edit, this is just improving the, the mobile apps for unsubscribe and disconnect that we have just seen. This you can do it because the methods are already implemented, implemented here. So this is it for the additional. Now another example. 
a more concrete example this time. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, in this example, it will be slightly different. What will be different in this example? I will have my mobile app uh, publishing something to the broker. But then the broker, my mobile app is not the subscriber and the publisher. Okay, it's not at the same time the sub subscriber and the publisher. I want to have on white side, there are some LD, uh, LD lights on my... Uh, Arduino board. Uh, now I need to be careful because we are using both Android and Arduino. I'm, uh, I'm very often I, I, uh, I, by mistake, I use instead of Arduino, I say Android, and instead of Android, I say Arduino because we work with uh, a, with both. So what I'm saying here, you have developed your mobile apps in Android. Yes, I'm right in Android, but then you want whatever message you're sending to the broker, you want a light to switch on or off on your Arduino board. So basically on one side, you have your mobile apps, you have your broker at the middle, and then on the other side, I have my Arduino board. Now in this time, uh, my Arduino board needs to be connected to the, to the broker to receive this message that is coming from the mobile apps. This is what we want to, uh, to do here. Where my mobile app is not the publisher and the subscriber, but on one side I have a mobile apps, on the other side I have my, my Arduino, Arduino board where I have plugged my L LD. So I, I have an architect, here it is, here it is. Have a look at this diagram. It explains everything. So I have the same application on this side, you see here. I can publish, I can subscribe as well, and I can receive message. You see down here, receive message. But on this side, I have an Arduino board a, a, to which I have connected an LD, an LD. So basically this uh, broker will send a message to switch on or off the LD. And from where we'll get the message, we'll get the message from your CSC 3099 sensor, lights on, publish. It, go, it comes here. Uh, we have received this Arduino was subscribed to CSC 3099 sensor. It was subscribed to it. It received a message, lights on. As soon as we receive a message, lights on, it, uh, it switch on the lights. Or you receive a message, lights off. As soon as you receive message, lights off, it switch off the LD. Uh, here I can say CSC 3099 sensor, lights off. I can say on, I can say off. Okay, so depending on what is being received, the light should switch on or off. Okay, again, this is something you can easily implement if, uh, if you have, uh, uh, if you have an Arduino. Yeah, basically you see here, this is cloud-based. You already have access to this. This is mobile apps. You can develop your mobile apps on an emulator or on your mobile mobile phone. And this, these things we already have in the lab. Okay. So for your mini project, uh, it will be very convenient if you are able, for example, to control something from your mobile apps. On this side, you have your mobile apps. On the other side, you have smoke detector, like some of you have seen in your project, you're talking about uh, uh, alarm systems, smoke detector, whatever. Then there's alarm that start or whatever. So this is basically, if you are able to get this connection from the mobile apps to your Arduino, so that's it. You can do practically anything you want. Uh, here, here you recall, there was a stepper motor that we have implemented to turn stepper motor to a specific degree, whatever. So you can connect it to a door. Then you have your mobile apps on this side and it is opening a door, closing a door through your mobile, through your mobile apps. So you see here, practically you can do anything. On one side, you have your mobile app sending a message to your Arduino, which is uh, controlling a particular sensor or, or an actuator, a stepper motor, whatever, turning it, moving it. Uh, you recall our stepper motor can show us weather conditions or whatever. So you basically you can do any anything. So let's check. Uh, in this example, we are using an ESP8269. This is a special uh, a board, okay, microcontroller board. Uh, we, well, why this one? This one already have Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi embedded uh, in it. it uh, so as we can connect to the, to, why we need Wi-Fi basically? Uh, let me put it, put that question. Why we are saying that uh, our in our original we need Wi-Fi? 
Anyone from the clubs? To be able to receive the message from the broker whether to turn on or turn off the LED. Okay, yeah. In general, we need to connect to the broker. Okay, we need to connect to the broker. So basically, to connect to the broker, I need to have internet connection and here through the Wi-Fi that I will get the internet connection in order to be able to connect to the, uh, to the broker. And, and you know, uh, our normal audio you know, that we have in the lab, it is not Wi-Fi enabled. Normally to make it Wi-Fi enabled, I need to connect a Wi-Fi shield on, on it and then it will be Wi-Fi enabled. Otherwise, if you have an ESP8266, this ESP board, I, I recall I bought one from AliExpress some time back, not now. I should be having it in my office. Uh, it was something like five, six dollar or something. I don't know now what is the price, huh? but uh, but it was five, six dollar. And, and it is Wi-Fi, it is Bluetooth, it is Wi-Fi enabled. It has got all the capabilities of an Arduino, of an Arduino board. Uh, when we're talking about five, six, yeah, and if you get it from free shipping, so five, six dollar, we are talking about uh, something like 250, uh, 300 rupees you get. Uh, uh, you get this uh, this board, while a, an Arduino, the 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 Arduino itself. Uh, which one? Which one we use in in the lab? Uh, which Arduino we use in the lab? Arduino Uno. Arduino Uno, exactly. Arduino Uno and everything. If you have to buy it uh, from Arduino itself, okay, from the provider, it costs me something like uh, the whole pack costs me something like four thousand. 5,000 rupees, the one that you're using in, in the lab, where you have everything together, though, right? it's not only the microcontroller. Here I was talking only the microcontroller from AliExpress, 250 rupees, 300 rupees, we already get, uh, a, a get it. Yeah, this is uh, an ESP8266, very popular one. Why? Because it is compact, it is cheap, highly cheap, it is Wi-Fi enabled, so very popular uh, and more or less same architecture as our Arduino. Uh, you, you, work, you work with it the same way that we have been working, our, the power and everything reset, everything is the is, is same. Okay, so you need a, a, a Wi-Fi connection. You connect to the online broker, obviously. Your Arduino needs to connect to the online broker. You subscribe to the broker to a particular topic, and then you receive message via callback, okay, via callback uh, from, the, a, from the broker. Recall, there was uh, a callback method in our apps that we implemented that uh, gives us a message that is, that is coming from the, a, from the broker. But this time, what is different here? What is different here this time uh, uh, the lights on and off. Uh, they could for turning the lights on and off. So if I put the question to the cops, okay, the code for turning on or off the LED, where it, where it should be, where it will be? On the original side. On the original side, obviously, because in my previous example, all codes were on my mobile apps because my subscribe, my uh, publish, the receive, everything was on the mobile apps. This time it is different. This time the code to switch on or off the LED. You have already done this in the lab. You were turning on and off uh, a LED where you were writing it on your Arduino, you write it on your laptop, then you download it on your Arduino, that will run there continuously. There's a, a setup and loop. Uh, way it executes there continuously. So basically, basically uh, the code for switching on and switching off the LED should be implemented on my uh, Arduino. Okay. Okay. So this is the part that is new here. Okay. Implementing the Arduino part of the application. This is new. The mobile apps remain same. Okay, because there also I want to still subscribe and, and view the, the message. That's, that's uh, no problem. But the main part for the mobile app is publishing. What to publish? Lights on or lights off. Now, this message, I want it to go to my Arduino to switch on the LED or switch off the, the, the LED. Let's check how to implement this now. Recall your Arduino. You recall your Arduino code? Setup, loop, digital write, read. You recall all this, I'm talking the same thing here, okay? But uh, we will see how we'll connect to the broker and receive the message. This is the most important thing. How to make my Arduino connect to the broker and receive the message that the mobile apps is, is uh, sending, 
okay you will need to install the pub sub client anyway to be just like in the mobile apps i need to um, to use uh, the publish subscribe client here also you need to use a publish subscribe client we include those libraries okay here is a wi-fi esp 8230 uh, 8266 wi-fi.h pub sub client.h okay so then start creating your Arduino apps to when you create your Arduino app this is just variable led one led two if you have two leads yeah you see here there is a constant server is called to broker.hive.com this is the address that i will need to especially pass to recall the variable here is server then you create a wi-fi client okay then you pass uh, the wi-fi client to your pub sub mqtt client i'm getting it from this, this pub sub it is already there from this pub sub client dot h so you don't have to worry through an api you're already getting it pub sub client mqtt client you pass this connection this wi-fi this wi-fi connection to this mqtt client then this is a setup port you are already familiar with this part pin mode led one uh, let one let me check to uh, pin two okay and led two is connected to pin four and we are setting them for output okay pin mode output uh have a delay of uh, 1000 that is one second is it one second and this is a board rate at which you will be reading okay let's check uh, setup wi-fi this is another function okay this is for the connection set up wi-fi and return that set server you recall hive broker hive mq.com this will be passed here this particular port at this particular port to connect then mqt set callback callback recall this is for reading the value and callback which was already implemented and this is the setup uh, wi-fi function this is for connecting so connect to wi-fi this is how do we uh, do it whether it is connected or not connected and this is the loop function the loop function put your main code here if mqtn that connect if it is connected not connect instead not there is not here misses if not connect then connect reconnect okay then mqtn dot uh, a dot dot loop you loop in the mqt client the setup wi-fi now this is the reconnect one nothing much here loop until we will reconnect it okay if not uh, mqtn.connected while not uh, connected then we need to connect and if mqtn.connect you get your id then once connected publish an announcement mqtn.publish csc3099 Okay, a particular message. This is what you want to publish. And here is subscribe. mqtn.subscribe. CSC. Recall the name has changed slightly because there was sensor also there. CSC 3099 sensor, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Okay, this is for uh, publish and this is for uh, subscribe. Okay. Let's check what we have else. This is my callback function, the callback we mentioned earlier. It is mqpt.setback callback. This callback here code, the callback code is here. Here it is. No, here it is. Yeah, callback, callback code. Uh, which topic, uh, which value? And here we, this is a, an integer, an integer value. Okay, so if a message is arriving, recall the mobile apps uh, will send a message. Okay, whether to switch on or off the light. So, and here the callback function will capture this message. In our on a Android, is it Android? No, Arduino. In our Arduino a code here, in our Arduino code, we will capture this message. Okay, we'll capture this message. Uh, here I'm putting it uh, in an array payload. Here it is, payload, payload. In the first position, uh, in the payload, if there's an O, in the second position, N, in the second position, if there's an N, so O, N means on. O, N means on. If I get this in this message here, for that particular topic, if I get this in this message here, O, N, N, meaning what I do? 
what I do here? I switch on the light, uh, the LED, uh, LED one high, LED two high. I switch on both for light. If there are two LED, there can be one LED only. Now, if payload at position zero, there is O, at position one, there is F, and at position two, there is F, means off, O, F, F, off, then I switch both off. So this will continuously run the callback, while depending on what we are receiving on or off that is coming from the from the broker and switching the lights on or, or off. Okay, so this is it, the Arduino port. Okay, how to implement the Arduino port? You need to have Wi-Fi, you have your callback method, you can publish subscribe, you have your subscribe method, you publish a method available there. Okay, and then you have your callback that is receiving message from the broker and a checking what, what value we have got and depending on it, it is switching off or on the, uh, the, the LED. This is it. Uh, I know I've gone through the, through, through the, through the code uh, briefly, but, uh, but now you have to go and implement. It's only while, while implementing that you will get uh, uh, to know the code better. And yeah, there are so many examples. I've tried to capture many examples here. You can check it, the, all those, all those links. I don't know, yeah, even YouTube, you see down here, there's a YouTube video down, uh, down here as well. Check, uh, uh, check all this. These are, most of those examples have taken it from, from those websites and everything. So to show to you first, how do you implement a mobile app, say it is a mobile app that can connect to Hive MQ, that can connect to Hive MQ and send a message, okay? Here it is to have MQ to send a message and a be a publisher and be a subscriber. But most important, we have seen how to implement for this side. Okay, on one side you have a mobile application sending to the broker, and the broker send the information to the a Android instead no Arduino to the Arduino board to do something. Okay, to switch on or switch off, and the code accordingly. You do it on your on your side. So. Basically, you can try this uh, this week in in the lab. For for this example, you don't need any equipment. For this example, you don't need any equipment. Okay, you have already your your Android Studio. Okay, you you call the Paho Android service. You implement your clients. You connect to the broker. You say if you have already done this, this part should not be a problem. This part also should not be a problem. Once you have the equipment down here. Okay, you will be able to implement that part as a, as a, as well. Okay, uh, th there is a emulator even for this and eh, for Android. Uh, I should send you the link. You can even implement codes, a, a, a Arduino code <coughs> through an emulator, just like uh, you you implement Android code through an emulator on your computer. You can have this as well. You ha can have uh, you can build your circuit everything, but in simulation. In, an, uh, in a simulated environment, and you can write your code, execute your code. All this you can do uh, on, I need to check uh, the, uh, the link and I will let you, have, uh, let you have this. So as you can even implement the whole thing, okay, without any equipment, you can implement the whole thing, your code, and you can check whether your code is working or it is not, it is not uh, working. Yes, <clears throat> I think we are <clears throat> we are done for the implementation. So you see here, I've, I've shown to you very concrete examples, step by step. So if you if only follow those steps, you should be able to develop uh, your, uh, your your application without uh, without any uh, any issue. Uh, yes, any question from from the class? on the implementation mainly. Any question on this uh, set of slides? This is the implementation part. You may be assessed on the implementation as well. Eh? Familiarize yourself, implement those codes. Anyway, those codes will be helpful even for your